point we're, we're moving away from this and get into Buddhism. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, we'll do Buddhism today then. <laughs> okay, so Frank wanted, we'll, we're going to take a few minutes. Frank wanted to talk about homosexuality. He's a, oh, member, yeah, yeah. he's a member of the Presbyterian Church in Kentucky, Tennessee, Tennessee and he says it's literally tearing the church apart. So uh, these are some of the quotes about uh, in the Bible for, about homosexuality. Um, and this is just one aspect, just one slice of the entire spectrum. Um, so the short version is that uh, Jews say that homosexuals should be killed. Is that correct? Everybody agree on that? Yeah, that homosexuals should be killed? Yes. Well, that's what that first Leviticus says. Yeah. You must both be put to death. So uh, Leviticus says that uh, homosexual, it actually even says prostitution. I have to look that up. But, uh, so, and it even says that um, a woman who gets married and she's, it's found that she was not a virgin should be killed. So part of the problem, I think, is that you're focusing on one issue when there's a whole spectrum that you it's dealing with sexual behavior. And that's certainly that's something that uh, just about every movie you see, this is all it's about. So, uh, you know, man and woman and, and the big attraction between the two and three and four. And, and uh, Mac Jones is the neurologist who usually sits in the front row in, in the morning class. He expressed the opinion, I think two weeks ago, that um, he is a neurologist, he's a medical doctor. And he said that uh, male brains and female brains are different from each other. Physiologically, they're different. And what he said is they've done scans and, and research, and they found that, I won't say all, I'll say many um, homosexual men actually have female brains and vice versa. Uh, female homosexuals actually have the brains that are the characteristics of men. That doesn't mean that there can't be a possibility of so socialization where it's not, doesn't have a, a brain reason for it or a glandular reason for it. Um, you know, it's, it's not just one thing. So the, the uh, teachings on this in the Old Testament was um, if you're a homosexual, they're going to kill you. In Islam, they teach that if you're a homosexual, they'll kill you. Um, and I think Paul talks about it a little bit. It's something that you says it's something that you came out of you know, Romans. Um, <clears throat> so what Frank was saying is that uh, the controversy now is whether homosexuals should be accepted as members of the church, whether they should be allowed to be leaders of the church, ministers, bishops. And he says it's literally tearing his church apart. So the United Church of Canada went through that um, uh, challenge. Yeah. And um, they eventually uh, adopted leaders of the churches mm -hmm. that were, yeah. you know, homosexual or whatever. And yeah. Members of the church also were yeah. were permitted to join and. The church really has struggled ever since. Yeah. Yeah. It's certainly not an easy. Most most guys that I know find the practice of sodomy to be totally repugnant. And if they were approached by someone, you're liable to catch a fist in the face. Um, so. Um, but as someone else said, you take people like uh, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, some of the greatest minds of history were homosexuals. So yeah. it's, it, it's, not a, it's not an easy topic. Um, Adrian. Yeah. Um, to build a wall across England. But, uh, yeah. So there are obviously people with capacity, and, and yet because of possibly because of the way they were born, physiologically, um, these kind of teachings say that they should be, should be killed. 
Oh, no, go right ahead, sir. Oh, Ernie. Uh, again, just uh, the history of the human race is one of learning experiences. Yes. And shifting attitudes because knowledge, understanding demands a different approach problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, probably about seven, eight months ago, uh, I was watching a documentary in Iran. Uh, there was a young man, a uh, very handsome young man, and uh, uh, he was able to survive only by submitting, he didn't want to do it, submitting to a complete sexual change. And the interesting and the important part of this is there was a discussion among the mullahs, among the religious leaders, because he searched the Quran for any, the sexual change and surgery was not forbidden, therefore it could be done and he could save himself by saving that, that change. Yeah. He goes on to lament the fact that uh, as a woman, now he is very restricted, now he has to wear the shador, yeah. uh, he cannot have, con I mean, in other words, it was a, a lose-lose situation for yeah. him no matter which, which way he went because one, he was physically dead, or otherwise he was socially dead. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm saying that even when there are attempts to bring about change, they're not always based on intel intelligent and rational thinking about what are some of the uh, critical and directly impacting issues or solutions. You brought it up as I have been reading about this for several years, that they had noticed that there was a change in the structure of the human brain is particularly one particular area that was mm -hmm. mentioned that showed a very distinct difference from a normal heterosexual man or normal heterosexual women. So what I'm, the point I'm sharing here is that we know too little about the fundamental causes and the realities of that condition because some of it is uh, men and women are addicted to sex. Either they're molested or yeah. they're introduced to that lifestyle. Others are just by their nature. They never feel comfortable with their skin as men. Uh, Sherry's uh, uh, daughter, yeah. who always, from the time she was little, she'd say, I am not a girl, I'm a boy. And her pattern of behavior, her attitudes were very masculine. And I mean, she was a child that was, was not conscious of, of her sexuality because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I can take myself until I was about seven or eight, I really didn't have any idea what sex meant. Yeah. I mean, uh, whatever physical reactions you have to situations, they're not based on desire for sexual activity, but rather just out of curiosity. So when you have a child that is like, starts at like three or four, she didn't like it when her mother dressed her in a dress. Mm -hmm. So eventually she had the sex change mm -hmm. and changed her name. So what I'm introducing here is that that goes along with eating poor, and that goes along with, I'm not, because as a Baha'i, homosexuality is a forbidden mm -hmm. behavior. So I'm not speaking in favor of it, no against it, I'm just merely stating how I uh, see the experience of the uh, human race moving forward, because the solution is not to murder all the homosexuals because we would lose yeah. half of our artists or 90% of the musicians or whatever. I mean, yeah. it seems like creative people tend to be more on that uh, right side, left side brain situation. And the fact is that we don't know enough about the physiological, psychological, emotional factors that they involve. I think that the church is right to take a stance because anything we take as a liberty, we don't just accept it, feel gratitude, and live uh, with dignity. We pull all the stops, and it frightens the population. Now, when, when the gay rights thing, I know how many of you, I'm, uh, I'm 83, so in the 60s I was uh, an adult, um, a part of middle age, and the gay parade uh, in San Francisco, well, the reason it was offensive is not because it was gay, but it was because it was really deliberately intending to challenge, to offend, uh, to, to raise, raise your blood pressure. <laughs> but we do that in all forms of protest. Yeah. I mean, I'm not condemning it, I'm saying we do react 
to behaviors, uh, whether it's a mob group or as an individual, we do react to behaviors that threaten our comfort zone. What's, 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 yeah. what's this, well, you know, it's been pervasive throughout history and, you know, in Rome, the gladiators were, most of them was gay. Yeah, increase. Yeah. And one of the reasons they put forward is because they didn't uh, have contact with women. They were con pretty much there with men all the time, you know. Yeah, like Christians. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, the Catholic Church, a lot of the priests in the, in the uh, monasteries and seminaries, seminaries uh, uh, were we're gay. We're having a relationship. Yeah, we, we don't even want to go there. I mean, the Pope today is having trouble with the problems yeah. and the, that church today. Yeah, not and, yesterday. And so, yeah. and even when I was a kid and I was in a Catholic school and you know the priests were doing their little dirty work around and we were warning each other against the yeah. priests, you know. Huh? But the thing is, is, is uh, I'm just wondering what the solution is. Unfortunately, I think there are no solutions. We have questions. Part of what uh, Frank's church has got a problem, and it's going to have a serious problem, yeah. because there are people that are going to believe that we should take the homosexuals out and kill them immediately, well, and there will be people that say yeah. we should embrace them. And that's going to be in your church, your congregation. It's going to be both sides of it. And no matter which side your group changes, you're going to lose half of whichever half is yeah, okay. So, it's so do you it's go by their, Well, it's mostly the churches against them being. Yeah, well, I understand kind of that. Do you we go do by their scriptures? Well, huh? see, you were bringing up a problem about we're learning stuff. When you go back to the time of the scriptures and before, uh, even Aristotle wasn't around, but Aristotle was teaching uh, that uh, the earth is flat. And uh, we know the earth is flat. He also taught about elements. I mean, Aristotle was a brilliant person. Mm -hmm. He made a lot of mistakes. But the four elements were earth, wind, uh, right. water, and fire. Yes. Yeah. He was right about being elements, but the, he had the names wrong. There was yeah. more to it. Yeah. Uh, so we are, as you were it's saying, we were learning all the time. But at the time when a lot of these scriptures were written, it was this way. And the earth was flat. And as we get later, uh, I mean, my, story, my, my favorite, one of my favorites about that is Copernicus. Uh, Copernicus had written the uh, story of, uh, with his math uh, oh, 30 years before it was published. But he knew the time he lived, the, uh, uh, okay. somebody would have been visiting with a bell, book, and candle. Absolutely. And, uh, he would have been. So when he published the book, and it finally got to Rome, the uh, court of uh, the Inquisition, realizing who he was, went to the Pope and said, do you know who this is? He said, yes, bring him here. So they went out to Poland to get him, and uh, when they got to his town, they found out he was in the cemetery. They did not dig him up to burn him. They just, <laughs> took, him, they just took that information back. But Copernicus knew at the time he lived, if he had written about the Earth not being right. the center of the Earth, he would have right. been put to death. Yeah. And when they went to put him to death, he was already dead. He'd been dead for six months. And it was Galileo who oh, yeah, took came the initiative oh, and yeah. almost got burnt, except yeah. that, yeah. remember the he famous... He recanted a couple of times. Him war. Yeah. He, this famous words of Galileo, after the Pope forced him, orally, verbally, to recant his statement that the uh, Earth was uh, not the not center, not the center <laughs> of the Earth, <laughs> He, he was quoted by the historians that as an aside he murmured and poor she moved. It, even so, it, it moves us. Yeah. You know. So that's. I think the well, issue is not that there's an answer. Well, right the now, church but, routinely burned all kinds of people back then. Yes. So, yes. Um, and we still do it figuratively, uh, not literally. And there's an the example where uh, well, some the, people do it the, the rabbis found the woman in adultery and they trying to trick Jesus and they said what do you say about this? And he told her, I do not condemn you. So according to Jewish law, she should have been killed. Yes. Uh, so, and of course, Jesus' response to them is, if you don't have any sins, then go ahead. And, you know, criticize one her. Of, one of the things I, I see it as a, as a sexuality, you know, and, and, you know, and I don't really have the right to choose someone's sexuality, just like I don't want them choosing mine. Yeah. You know, 
I'm heterosexual. I don't want to tell me to be homosexual, you know. But where but, you run into problems is where you start talking about marriage. Oh, yeah. Or forcing uh, people of a certain faith who own uh, wedding cake shops. Yeah. Well, I'm just, all I'm saying is that, right. you know, it's a sexuality to me, you know, people. issue. But, you know, if you, if you say that to uh, a gay person, then, you know, they might want to kill you. You know, <laughs> you know well, they, they, they feel it's like it's a total existence, lifestyle, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it's just more than just sexuality. Oh, is this helping any? <laughs> well, the thing is, I think the issue is, you, you know, you have people that don't want it, people that think it's okay. The thing is, I don't think anybody today in our society wants to kill every homosexual. I oh, would yes, hope not. Are. There are yes, some people. Are. Well, then you know the they, they have problems. We're, you not know, the so, yeah, yeah, we're not supposed to judge American one another. That is one of the things, I think, from all oh, scriptures. Okay. You, you do not judge others. You, they have to walk their own path. But your church... You have to go by what your scripture says, and they're saying yeah. you can love them. I don't see why they can't be part of the congregation. Well, You're be. not to judge them. But if they're openly saying, I am a practicing homosexual, then they can't lead that church. Why? That Because they're not going by, you know, what it says in scripture, oh, I would they think. Can't lead the church. Yeah, they, yeah, I can't see how they should be ordained when they're yeah. not willing to follow the. Well, that's, we don't have a clergy that's in our. Pretty debatable, faith, but, you know, because there's a yeah, whole lot there of are churches, churches that they do they have homosexual well, leaders. So. Yes, well, they do, but they're well, not following the scripture. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was, and they do. And yeah. That's what yeah. I was just going to say, because uh, I know we're going to Buddhism, and we're not helping Frank that much. Yeah. Uh, but what the American Indians did when they found people of that persuasion, uh, they did not want them around the children, so they mm -hmm. drummed them right. out of their tribe, right. but down the road, 14 miles. There's you know, another tribe? <laughs> no, it was a tribe of homosexuals. Oh, mm -hmm. oh okay. And they, they could go do whatever the hell they wanted, in, in but the, just don't come around uh, us and in, the kids. Okay. You stay away from the kids, you go out in the woods and you play with each other. Just that leave kinda, us the hell alone. Kind of bothers me a little bit about how now they're celebrating homosexuality oh, yeah. in the yeah. media. Like I mean, like yeah. they're that's like, normal. So super and wonderful. Wow. But and the, and one the other kids, comment I make about the kids don't know how to yeah. how to so, deal with that. Curious. I'm always looking for the good side, good part of things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people have been pointing out for a <laughs> long time is that the overpopulation of this planet by humans may lead to the ultimate collapse of all of civilization. There's all sorts of things written about the problem of people and overpopulation. Well, if homosexuality becomes the law of the land, we won't have to worry about overpopulation. <laughs> well, kind of take that. <laughs> Let me explain where yeah. I'm coming from on this. I'm an old psychology major. Mm -hmm. I graduated from college in 1970. And in some of my psychology courses, we discussed homosexuality. And at the time, it was, it was supposed to be fit, uh, psychological. You know, you had an overbearing father, or an overbearing mother, mother. and like oh, father. Yes. Went through that theory for a while. And then it comes along, and now, well, it's physical. You got too many chromosomes, this many chromosomes, and then this. Joel is talking about, uh, I mean, not Joel, uh, Mark, Mac, 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 yeah, Mac. Mac, just talking about it may be the brain size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read an article here what, a couple of years ago. It may be hormonal. The, mm -hmm. the, the hormones that the, the mother was taking or is on or is producing at the time <clears throat> may cause it. Mm -hmm. Whether it be psychological or whether it be physical, what does it matter? Yeah. He's like this. This woman exactly. or this one is like this. Let's deal Have with compassion. it. You know, you talked about the child. Uh, don't want them teaching the kids. A guy got right up there in our Sunday school class and said, well, it's okay if they come to church, but I don't want them teaching my son, my children in their Sunday school class. Well, what's he going to teach? Right. He's you supposed know, to be teaching. To, to, to a man or whatever. You know. And I'm just... What's a homosexual supposed to do? Is he supposed to not practice? Is he... You know, loneliness will kill you more than cancer will. There's more causes of death from loneliness and being lonely. Is he, he or she not supposed to take a mate, and or what? Well, that's the Catholic yeah. Church. That's what they expect you know? their priests to do. Yeah, well, and <laughs> so, it just—I mean—to yeah. love someone. They think it's okay. Is wonderful. 
It's the great. It's yep. just you know, if you know what love is, and you love a man or you love a woman, or the same sex, it's wonderful. What well, what are you supposed to do? But you're the and voice you can of pray. compassion. Yeah, you're yeah. the voice of compassion on the pray. issue. Yeah. The, the difficulty is uh, none of this is going to help in your con no. congregation, yeah. <laughs> because it is like so many things. I have decided that everything on the left wing of politics is exactly what I like, or I have decided everything <laughs> on the right wing of politics yeah. is what I like, and you can't get the two together. Uh, yeah. I have watched supposed conservatives and liberals on television supposedly discuss the issues. All they do is scream and yell at each other. Yeah. You're an idiot. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You didn't read the right book. Uh, we can't talk about it. You're never going to get that congregation to talk. Yeah. They're going to have to make a decision, and it's going to hurt no matter what the heck they do. You know, one of the things that uh, I found out here recently, as, uh, as far as the Baha'i faith, is that uh, they got a whole group of Baha'is in, in D.C. that's uh, homosexual. Sure. But are they practicing? What do, you, what, what do you mean practicing? With well, the Baha'i. You can say you have that inclination. No, no, but no. You they're, don't, they're practicing. Oh, are they practicing the Baha'i faith? Yeah. In their Baha'is. Yeah. Are they practicing Baha'i? Yeah. Okay. You and know, they're, I have they're a, practicing their homosexual lifestyle. That's what? Well, you know, I have a problem. I guess it's if a monogamous heterosexual or homosexual, I think that's wonderful. It's, it's, it, but just as a, a homosexual taking many partners in one night, Again, you have a problem with mm -hmm. the heterosexual taking many partners in one night. Mm -hmm. But if a man and a man love each other, and it's, they're in this monogamous relationship with each other, fine. Yeah, I don't think I, we can I, judge each other. According to I, Jewish I, I, law, you know, Mary I'm should have been killed. But I, but I, yeah. Mary was pregnant when she got married, right. uh -huh. and it wasn't her husband. So right. by Jewish law, she <laughs> should have been comes. killed. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know. So, hmm. No, but uh, you when know, you start getting into scriptures, you, you yeah. can't get into scriptures because there's ah. Oh. It's clear. It's John, right, and yeah. Frank. Yeah. Uh, you see, the thing is that we cannot find solution by going back and looking at those circumstances because totally out of context historically. Oh yes. Theologically, I mean. Scientific. Uh, homosexuality, yeah. within our time, is still not an acceptable thing simply because we have a mindset, and. It comes through spiritual teachings. It comes through social teachings. Uh, it tends to threaten. We think that the whole world is going to fall apart. But you brought a point that I have used many times in argument. I'm not in favor or against of what two men do because it's not my business. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought a point of compassion. People are going to have friends. People are going to have lovers. People are going to have partners, mates, people that help them fulfill their lives. Now. We get so, I mean, we're like a microscope fi fixed on a, on a cellular point of a huge elephant and trying to cover all the bases. <laughs> and we're not going to get there because we're not really dealing with the problem. We have seen enough history to see the radical social changes that happen. First of all, the serfs uh, are no longer. Um, we have we are a world of, of free men, generally speaking. I mean, we, we know we have dictatorships and problems, but overall, we know we've reached a point where the whole world can become a democratic system. We could live in greater degree of safety and, and harmony. So I'm just I'm just saying that when if we're looking for an answer, we're not going to find one. And you were right, John. The thing is is to look and understand where we are now and how the pieces fit together. Because I'll tell you something that's bothered me for a long time. I grew up very poor. And I saw people that were all members of the church. Guy comes home, gets drunk, beats his wife, and spends the money on booze. The wife is, he beats his wife because she is complaining loudly that he doesn't provide for her and her children, they don't have any milk. Um, but the church doesn't intervene. That's, you know, you just take it because you're the wife, just follow your husband. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a really wonderful Christian attitude. No one does anything about the problem. It's swept under the, because it says in the Holy Book. I left the Catholic Church because I went to the priest and I said, this bothers me a lot. You're the shepherd and the sheep are there. I said, the rams are beating the hell out of the ewes and starving their children. And he told me I was going to go to hell. I said, well, fortunately, it's not in your hands. And I, I left. I, I never abandoned my faith, my love of Christ. But I'm saying is that if we are not approaching the problem, 
directly with a focus on, on what the problem is, we understand the problem, how are we going to come to solution? Because there is no single answer for this thing. We're dealing with human beings. How come nobody is running on the streets, waving their hands and screaming, help, help, help? If my two or three sons go and seduce my neighbor's daughters, get them pregnant or sleeping with my neighbor's wife, like having one member of my family, uh, where the guy was in the military, he unfortunately didn't kill my nephew. But nobody's alarmed by that. Mm -hmm. We have a very strange, lopsided morality, and every time we, we touch anything that goes in accordance with what we believe, we grab the book. Yes. But when it's not convenient, we don't grab the book. We grab the psychology. You're the psychologist. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is, neither of those things are going to provide answers because it's not approached from a purely rational, intelligent look at the problem. If we were to try to cure cancer or measles or anything with that approach, uh, half the world would be gone by now from disease. And I think that if a man behaves with dignity, if he uh, minds his own business, his personal life and private life is his business. Mm -hmm. If he's not violating the moral code, not your moral code or mine, but I mean a moral code that says that don't offend, don't come and offend, don't don't in your face, because you can know that two men or two women are living together, but they live with dignity and respect. They're um, uh, helping sustain the community. I think what happens here is man playing God. Mm -hmm. I think man playing God is the big problem here. I think that I can look at anybody, even a thief and a drug addict, even a prostitute, because she's a woman, even though uh, someone may think she doesn't deserve respect. I would treat her with respect and courtesy because that's who I am. And uh, I doesn't mean that I would approve her lifestyle or uh, to sit with my wife at dinner, but I'm saying that I would treat this person with respect and, and in a humane way. <coughs> uh, when we take a human being and crucify him on a barbed wire fence, like that young man in Colorado, we haven't got a single moral brick even to stand on for that kind of behavior. So there are no answers to this problem here. Well, so about, you were right, John, 100%, yeah. only questions. Six, 60 to 70 percent of the children born in this country today are illegitimate, so by this standard, yeah. they should all be killed. This so, is a divine standard, but yeah. again, what we see all the time in our discussions yeah. of religion is we things are out of context. Yeah. We're not living. I'm not yeah. shepherding sheep out there yeah. all day long. I think we're probably preaching to the yep. to yeah. Frank's choir here. Yeah. So, uh, so I'll take it. Where anything yeah. goes, it's no solution. That's right. For, Jimmy Carter for, quit for, his church for because they actually wanted to admit black people. In, a, in another. So, uh, yep. Yeah, it's, or Indians, or it's, you know, it's like corruption. Yeah. How can we solve the corruption in Washington? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you start. Yeah, it's, it's, an no, it's that no solution. Question. They're gonna always be corrupt. There's an answer. And they to that always question. been. Uh, <laughs> well, we, you we don't be corrupt. We did promise Pardon? we were gonna get Carter into quit his church. Yeah, good. yeah. That was years ago. Yeah. yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I mean before he's. You might have to do this two weeks. <laughs> you suggested that uh, they actually admit black people, and they wouldn't do it. So. Uh -huh. So just a slight okay. review. Uh, a week or two ago, we talked about Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, and I just wanted to start out with this quote. Krishna, of course, was from India. He's a prophet who lived. No one knows what he lived, but it's an awful long time ago. Uh, theoretically, he's the originator of Hinduism, or at least he was somewhere on the continuum. Uh, so. What's interesting is that uh, Krishna said that whenever righteousness declines and unrighteousness rises up, then he says, I myself come forth, I come back, for the destruction of evildoers, for the sake of his firmly establishing righteousness, I am born from age to age. So this is kind of the process of religion, the return of the prophet from age to age. Mm -hmm. He's not saying that his own, the physical body that existed at this time is going to return, but the same voice will return. Right. So this is kind of my uh, segue into Buddhism. Um, Do you want me to turn the lights off? Or? I don't know. Okay. I think, can you see it? Or? It's, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. So, uh, of course, 
this is just a blazing generalization of what Buddhism is because there are many different kinds of Buddhism, probably just as many as, as there are forms of Christianity and all the other religions. It's, and each uh, region has produced its own variation on the theme and uh, some of the variations are very different from each other. But, so Buddha lived in India, uh, so this would have been after Krishna sometime ballpark 563 to 43 BC. Um, his teachings were initially oral traditions, were not written down until about three to four hundred years after the time that he lived. So we're talking about pretty close to the time of Jesus, yeah. or maybe slightly before. So these are the, uh, Buddhism is known for the Eightfold Path, um, these are pretty much universal uh, principles that exist in every religion. I would think that you would find each one of these somewhere in Judaism or Christianity or Islam. Uh, right view, right intentions, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right concentration, right mindfulness. So just viewed ethically uh, in, in terms of how Buddhists are told to live their lives, uh, I wouldn't have any problems with anybody in acting, interacting with someone with, with this kind of lifestyle. Uh, relating this to what Krishna said, uh, Buddha preached that there had been innumerable Buddhas that had lived in previous ages in countries like Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Laos, pretty much east of India. Uh, it's customary a Theravada Buddhism to hold elaborate festivals to pay homage to 29 Buddhas. Some Hindu texts, Gautama is regarded as one of the ten avatars of the god Vishnu. So in Hindu text, in the, uh, the ten avatars of Hinduism, Buddha is actually considered to be one of the ten avatars. He's the avatar after Krishna. So Gautama supposedly stated that he was the fourth Buddha who had appeared in the era in which he lived, in the era, he identified the Buddhas who preceded him in this age as, and he names them. And he further promised that at least one more Buddha, the fifth Buddha, was still yet to arise at a time far in the future. So most uh, Buddhists either do not concern themselves with the idea of God, or they say that they denied the existence of God. Uh, there is a book written by Jamshid Falsdar. Uh, the title of the book is The God of Buddha. And it's a pretty thick book. And he talks about the Buddhist texts that, that uh, indicate that it didn't just happen, that, that Buddha's teachings came from somewhere. So if it is true that Gautama was, in fact, one of a series of many Buddhas, and if at, at least one future Buddha was still yet to arise, then this would suggest an ages long process of revelation. So where did the process come from? Buddha preached that for every effect there had to be a cause, and that there was actually a causeless cause of all causes. So this is karma. An ultimate reality, a boundless light, must clearly be infinite, unlimited, and without attributes. And then he talked about uh, an uncreated one. In a famous Pali text, uh, a disciple of Buddha wrote, quoting Buddha, who said, O disciples, there is a non-born, a non-produced, a non-created, and a non-formed. If there were not, O disciples, a non-born, a non-produced, a non-created, and a non-formed, there would be no issue for the born, the produced, the created, the formed. So, I, you know, something, nothing comes from nothing. Something has to cause this. And Buddha, the story of Buddha is he went out and sat under the Bodhi tree and received enlightenment. So where did the enlightenment come from? So since Buddha maintained that everything in the world has come into existence due to the law of karma, the law of action and reaction, there can be no action without the doer and the willer of action. Therefore, there must, be a, must have been a creator of the law of karma. We'll call this creator people, God. Buddha called him the first cause. And then Buddha, Gautama Buddha says that more Buddhas are still coming. Another one will come. Towards the end of his life, Gautama made it clear that he was about to die. When Ananda, his 
because of the foremost disciple became disconsolate, Buddha consoled him by saying, Have I not formally declared to you that it is in the very nature of all things near and dear to us to pass away? He's human, he was born, he will die. O Ananda, seeing that whatever is brought into being contains within itself the inherent necessity of dissolution, how can it be said that such a being as Buddha should not also be dissolved? Gautama informed Ananda that in another three months he would pass away. Ananda, suppressing his tears, said to the Blessed One, But who shall teach us when you are gone? Buddha replied, I am not the first Buddha who came upon this earth, nor shall I be the last. In due time, another Buddha will arise in the world. A holy one, a supremely enlightened one, endowed with wisdom and conduct, auspicious, knowing the universe, an incomparable leader of men, a master of angels and mortals. He, the, the, the future Buddha, will review, re reveal to you the same eternal truths which I have taught you. He will preach to you his religion, glorious in its origin, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the goal, in, in spirit and in the letter. How shall we know him? He was asked. He will be known as Maitreya, which is, means he whose name is kindness. He will proclaim a religious life, holy, perfect, and pure, such as I now proclaim. His disciples will number many thousands, while mine number many hundreds. So his impact will be greater. In another place, Gautama promised, at that period, brethren, there will arise in the world an exalted one named Maitreya, Arahant. Arahant means fully awakened. Abounding in wisdom and goodness, happy with knowledge of the worlds, unsurpassed as a guide to mortals, willing, mortals willing to be led, a teacher for gods and men, an exalted one, a Buddha even as I am now. It's interesting that he uses the phrase uh, leader of gods and men. Yeah. The truth, the Dharma, lovely in its origin, lovely in its progress, lovely in its consummation, will he, the Maitreya, proclaim, both in the spirit and in the letter, the higher life will he make known in all its fullness and in all its purity, even as I do now. So the prophecy attributed to Gautama Buddha himself is that a Buddha named Maitreya, the Buddha of Universal Fellowship, should in the fullness of time arise and reveal his boundless glory. Another name for Maitreya is Amit, Amit Abha. It's translatable as most glorious light. So Amita means infinite or unbounded, Abha means glorious. Yeah. <laughs> Buddha stated, a true follower of, of the Buddha uh, does not found his trust on austerities and rituals, but giving up the idea of self relies with his whole heart upon Amitabha, which is the unbounded light of truth. Prophecies of the fifth Buddha are the Amitabha, correspond with the prophecies of the coming of the tenth avatar of God found in Hinduism and the, promise, the prophecies of the return of the founders of the other world religions. This is kind of the law of karma. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. As you sow, so shall you reap. <laughs> so I know that John has been in the East, and so is this, you already knew this, or? A, a lot of it. <clears throat> okay. One of the more interesting Buddhist temples I went to was in the place called Mandalay, and when I was there it was called Burma, it's now uh, Myanmar, yeah. but I'm sure it's still Mandalay. Uh, <clears throat> as a part of that, which of course is even further to the east, uh, there was part of the story was that Buddha did not want any statues left of him. <laughs> And well, what they, they started with. <laughs> well, I don't know whether this is true yeah. or not. Neither did Jesus. But yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a. Uh, uh, they started on this hill with a, a, a replica of a footprint, which we could lay down. Yeah. Uh, it was a big footprint. <clears throat> and it got covered. 
to protect it from the elements. And then there were other symbols that were made as a resemblance, a reminder of Buddha. As you go further up the hill and around the hill, then you get to where they've now made actual Buddhas. And, uh, but all of that came. The first part was a footstep to remind where Buddha came and taught. Mm -hmm. And that's all it was, a couple mm -hmm. footprint. It was that way for a long time. <coughs> and then they went into other things. And that part I found was very interesting. Is, is, uh, okay. is Burma John? now called... Uh, I was going to ask uh, a question. Burma is now Myanmar. Yes. Myanmar, yeah. Myanmar, yeah. Myanmar, yeah. Myanmar. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rangoon, I can't go back there either. It's now Yangon. Uh, Joel said you were Buddhist? No. No, he just has been in the military in the countries. So. Oh, and then you learned, oh, you were in the military and you were there? And I was on vacation when I was out there. I took some <laughs> time while I'm out. <laughs> Further to these, I was stationed in Thailand. Well, I wanted to ask but you a question. Also it's, it's, it's relevant to, to a lot of the argument here. I, my impression is, I, I've known a lot of Buddhists, American Buddhists even, they tend, uh, the Buddhists tend to be some of the most peaceful people you can have contact with. That's my experience. <coughs> experience. Well, yeah, they are. And, and, uh, and they, they are the ones that developed all this, uh, not all of it, but they developed a lot of the uh, martial arts because uh, they didn't want to do anything, but if you ticked off a Buddhist monk, uh, if you tried to rob him, he'd kill you. I don't know. Uh, yes. And he, they're not the only ones. Other parts of the martial arts developed for right. others, but Many, there have been many uh, religious groups that have developed martial arts. Yes. Uh, a tremendous amount of power from a single human being yep. through, through what I choose to call uh, divine illumination. In other words, if you really know yourself, you're at your strength. But I, I, that was my impression of the Buddhists that I have met. Oh, I wonderful. travel around and I find them loving, accepting. Uh, it's a, the rare to get difficulty with all the religions that I have run into, which is most of them, even the Hindus are very nice people. They're fine. They are very nice, but they are more warlike. Oh, yes. But, uh, They're more like most, us. <laughs> more than that. So are some of the uh, chimpanzees, but I don't want to get into that either. Well, the, yeah. the Jews, the, the, the Judeo-Christian Islam. Yeah, no, I said the chimpanzees, not the Jews. Very, <laughs> the monkeys. <laughs> the, 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 the monkeys. That's interesting how the, uh, the, his followers, it, it almost reminds you of the story of Christ talking to the disciples. They all do. How will we know, uh, <laughs> they know what all are the signs? Do. And they, yeah. they're saying the same All things. of the religions yes. so far that I have ever experienced with the exception of some really wacky ones, you know. Well, uh, uh, there was one down in Miami many years ago. Uh, they're a bunch of potheads, so they were worshiping uh, cannabis. Of course. Uh, yeah, but th that was under religious freedom. We can have our church do this, and we get together and smoke and have good times. Anyhow, uh, but outside of that, most of your religions are fairly serious. They have good intentions towards themselves and to all other people. We just don't live in accordance with the teachings of whichever church you want to talk about. We kill each other. That's the problem. Well, we corrupt our own churches, too. This well, is yeah, what we happens. kill them, too. We, but, we yeah. don't even go to the, you know, The thing I was talking life. about, Mandalay, there's a movie with Bob Hope many years ago called <laughs> the road to Mandalay, Mandalay. Mandalay. Uh, on the road to Mandalay where the flying fish play. Well, after being there, I know how the flying fish play in the road to Mandalay. Oh, okay. And this is just very uh, an aside. Uh, the road to Mandalay is the Irrawaddy River. Oh, okay. And it has flying fish in it. It goes from yeah. down by Rangoon up through the central part of Burma, and Mandalay is there. So the road to Mandalay actually has flying fish. fish. It is the Irrawaddy River. <laughs> so there is a piece of trivial information that you, at least you took something away from Is that from during quest. spawning season, like the salmon do up in the Northwest? Or? <laughs> do they talk any more about the previous Buddhas? He said he was number four. Did, did they yeah. elaborate yeah, more about the Yeah, he named them, three? but I think it's so ancient in history that they, they don't have really have the records, records of them anymore. No, this there, was even there is a Buddha years after that he lived that these writings came out. Is yeah. that correct? Um, so no one knows when when uh, Krishna lived, but, so the Buddha was like 600. And as you said, I was fur further to the east of uh, India, and uh, the Maharaja of some place, uh, 
I was I was there, Varanasi. Some places always got a monk. Yeah, Varanasi, they have a bunch of them. But it was around Varanasi, and supposedly uh, that is where Buddha grew up as a Hindu uh, prince. And what started him, according to this tradition, going into those thoughts is that his life as a prince uh, in Hinduism was always filled with good stuff and he got over to the edge of the fan, the uh, fence and heard people crying and moaning and he did something he wasn't supposed to do. He went outside the fence and saw people having very difficult times and that's when he started seeking the enlightenment, yes. became enlightened and became yes. the Buddha. He was so protected by his oh, yeah. family. We can all do that. It's a wonderful video on that that you can, probably it's on Netflix too. I know PBS and some of the other channels have done this Life of Buddha, and it's really well done. Yeah. Netflix has become a Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's very well done. Yeah, he was it a, is. a Rever human. With reverence and with he respect. actually lived. Yes. So, uh, yeah. and, uh, so what thoughts do other people have about any of this? Can, can you see the connections between the, the similarities between? Oh, that was me. I, yeah. I started seeing. Yeah. As I got introduced well, to more why. religions, they're all the same. <laughs> that, and none of them practice what they preach. <laughs> but well, they're progressing they during time. Well, they keep trying. Yeah. That's because we're human. I know yeah. we're human. <laughs> well, and we, if we were cows, we'd all be. <laughs> each one of them also promises that one day there will be one fold and one shepherd. So. Yes. So technologically, we're already one people. So, yep. Um, so who, the, the who biggest knows? difficulty I have with most of the folk that claim to be exceptionally religious uh, are looking forward in the very near term to the end of the earth. And I, I know that does not come from any church's preachings. Yeah. It's their own desires. Yeah. The, yeah, the end of the earth is a time unknown except to God. It's We know the sun's going to burn out. We know things are going to happen in the future. We've got at least half a million years left. Yeah, so. we only have five and a half million years. I'm, I'm going to stay up all night and worry about it. How about you? <laughs> so. but who know, how much well, do you know about the Zoroaster? We're not not enough. The comment hit us the other day, a, a, rather a, a, a meteor. I've heard of it. It burned up just before we got here. Yeah. The big light that they uh, saw. Uh, I think I saw yeah. something on... Going 43,000 miles an hour. <laughs> did, did the cop give it a speeding ticket? <laughs> did he catch it and write him a ticket? <laughs> it I burned up before he got to it. <laughs> did you make any effort to see if there were any Zoroastrians? Because there's a lot of Persians here in, in, the, in the U.S. The closest I can find are in Tampa. They were? Tampa. In Tampa. Yeah. Unless it would be great to get a, a speaker. That's an ancient well, that's, yeah, with that's why I was thinking of using, you know, remote. Oh, you were talking remote about remote speaker. Yes. Yeah, uh, so. I've been corresponding with a guy in in Tampa, and he says that's the closest. So, Zoroastrian actually used to be one of the largest religions in the world, and just about nobody's heard of it. Did, it, did it come from the did, Sabines? Uh, yeah, maybe no. Does this, is this at the same time as uh, Judaism? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the Zoroastrian religion is a monotheistic religion mm -hmm. founded about 1000 BC in Persia, which is Iran, by the prophet Zoroaster, also known as Zarathustra. These are the Greek versions of his name. Uh, my mouth can't actually pronounce his real name. Uh, I was once asking a Persian Zoroaster. person to, to tell me about Zoroaster, and he had no idea what I was talking about. And I said, a Persian prophet lived about 1000 BC, and he says, oh, it's Sardosht. So in the mm -hmm. east, and that's probably totally mispronounced, mm -hmm. but, but it's formerly one of the world's largest religions. And it was the religion that pretty much stretched from uh, uh, the Mediterranean to India. India, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So one story associated with the birth of Zoroaster was that Ahura Mazda was another way of... It, Ahura Mazda is the way the people in the West spell it, but 
In the East, it's more like Ormast, Ormast, Ahormast, Ast. Again, my mouth can't even say the word. Uh, that our, our God descended from heaven and entered the house of the would-be mother of the prophet. Angels also came in the house and worshipped and praised the unborn child. In his early years, Zoroaster displayed great wisdom, a knowledgeable lad. Right from the very beginning, he argued with wise men and criticized the heretics. Sound familiar? Very. <laughs> so Zoroaster, and that's him in the white robe, was initially opposed by the people, and there were uh, a series of petty kings or small kingdoms, let's say. Uh, he eventually succeeded in converting one of the local kings. This is the image of him converting the king. Zoroastrian was the main religion of the Persian kings for 200 years until they were conquered by Alexander the Great in 330 BC. The Greeks who ruled West Asia after Alexander did like Zoroastrianism and neither did the Parthians. Uh, the reason that the uh, Romans never conquered Iraq or Iran was because of the Parthians. The Parthians were actually militarily superior to the Romans. But the Parthians didn't like Zoroastrian either. Uh, Parthi, Parthi means is Persians, is what it means. But the Sasanian dynasty, when they took over the Parthian Empire in 227 AD, were very strong believers in Zoroastrianism. What's interesting is some of these dynasties are actually, uh, can trace their line back to King David of Israel. Hmm. Because the Jews spent hundreds of years as slaves in, in Babylon, and it was the Persians who, who uh, ran Babylon. So this is a 2001 Space Odyssey, and the theme song yes. of 2000 Space Odyssey is also spoke Zarathustra, or Zoroaster also spoke. Uh, so the basic teachings are that Zoroastrians believe that there is one universal and transcendent God, Ormast. He is said to be the one created creator, the uncreated creator to whom all worship is ultimately directed. Monotheistic religion. Ahura Mazda's creation, evident as Asha, our truth and order, is the antithesis of chaos, which is evident as druge, or falsehood, and disorder. The resulting conflict involves the entire universe, including humanity, which has an active role to play in the conflict. So Nietzsche wrote, also spoke Zarathustra, mm -hmm. and the cartoon on the right is, uh, hello, Zoroaster speaking. <coughs> That's a joke. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So the Zoroastrian religion states that active partition in life through good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. Sounds it's necessary <laughs> to ensure happiness and to keep chaos at bay. This active participation is a central element of Zoroaster's concept of free will. Uh, I had a friend from India, and um, he said that uh, Zoroastrians, the reputation of Zoroastrians is such that in the newspaper, uh, if you see a used car being advertised, if it says Parsi owned, the Parsis are Zoroastrians. Uh, if it says Parsi owned, you know that they won't cheat you. So God will ultimately prevail over the evil. And when the Jews were captive in, in uh, Babylon, they came back with an idea of a Satan, or of an evil one. They didn't really have it up to that point. So it says that God will ultimately prevail over the evil one, at which point the universe will undergo a cosmic renovation. This renovation of all creation, even the souls of the dead, were initially banished to darkness, will be reunited with God, returning to life in the, in the undead form. At the end of this era, a savior figure, or a salshant savior, will bring about a final renovation of the world the world is Frasho Kareti, in which the dead will be resurrected. So again, very similar to Judaism and Christianity. Uh, you see the symbol uh, carved on the, the palace wall carvings of the ancient Assyrian Empire. So this, is, this symbol is called the 
Paravahar, uh, or the guardian angel. And uh, so the symbolism is the hand reaching for heaven and higher ideals. Three rows of feathered wings are good reflection, good words, and good deeds. Uh, two streams to the soul, free will, choosing to face the good or the other side. Three rows of tail feathers, bad thoughts, bad words, and bad deeds. Uh, the winged discs of Assyria and the palaces, oh, this is the symbol that's there. Uh, obviously, this was not the only religion of the Assyrian Empire. They were also enthusiastically pagan. But, um, so the circle symbolizes the soul, the ring, loyalty and faithfulness. Uh, it had the soul of humans and wisdom of the ages. The Zoroastria still exists today. Uh, when the Muslims arose and conquered Iran, Zoroastrians were considered to be people of the book, uh, so equal to Jews or Christians. Uh, that was the theory. The, ex the reality was that Muslims usually treated Zoroastrians horribly, it was uh, unclean. So uh, many of the large populations of, of the Zoroastrians of Iran moved to India, and today in India they're known as Parsi, which means Persian, Persians. So Zoroaster lived about 1000 BC, for the, foretold the appearance of three saviors who would still come, still appear, each appear at about 1000 year intervals. The first of these saviors may have been Jesus. There's speculation that the wise men who traveled to visit the infant Jesus were Persian Zoroastrians. This is a common story in the East. I was in the British Museum about a year ago in London, and they had an exhibition titled Wise Men from the East, Zoroastrian Traditions in Persia and Beyond. And they actually had artifacts from the ancient Zoroastrians. Um, so again, this is kind of a so Did the they make you take a picture in the museum? I'm just curious. Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was from the internet. But yeah. yeah, I photographed everything I okay. saw. So the second savior appeared about 600 years later after Jesus, and he may have been Muhammad. Uh, as I said, Muhammad said that Zoroastrians should be people of the book, but still they were treated horribly. But of course, the Muslims treated everybody horribly. But, uh, so, and then Zoroaster also foretold the appearance of a third savior. And one of the names of this Messiah is Shabaran, or King, King Glory of God. That's one of the ancient Assyrian carvings. And this is what Zoroaster said about the Saushant, the savior. He shall be victorious benefactor by name and world renovator by name. He is benefactor because he will benefit the entire physical world. He is world renovator because he will establish the physical living existence indestructible. He will oppose the evil of the progeny of the biped and will withstand the enmity produced by the faithful. You could probably translate that a little bit better. But, um, <laughs> and I believe that's the hollow. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I guess that's the end of it. Um, so had you heard of Zoroaster before? Or? No, okay. No. Uh, very well known in the East. Um, it's actually growing. I read somewhere that it was actually Zor that Zoroastrian faith was beginning a resurgence. And they, they had the eternal light thing. Eternal flame, yes. yes. Flame, yeah. yeah. They, they yeah the, well, the time. flame is a universal symbol in all the religions. So, you know, the Catholic Church with the candles and flame upon the mm -hmm. altars. And, um, the Zoroastrians don't, don't let it go out, though. Right. Well, and Period. Jewish synagogues have the eternal flame that burns <laughs> in synagogues, too. So, it's each one of the religions use the cardinal, as you say, earth, wind, and fire, you know, kind of, kind of things. Maybe John Kennedy was a uh, Zoroastrian. Zoroastrians <laughs> believe that, that this. <laughs> Soil is sacred, so they do not bury their dead because hmm. they don't want to put dead people in the ground. Hmm. So they That's built towers of silence, they call them, where um, 
they would put the dead bodies and the basically the birds of prey would come take care of them. Oh my goodness. So, which caused a problem in later <laughs> later in <laughs> India where they started building high-rise <laughs> apartment buildings. So you could see yeah. down inside mm -hmm. these things. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So interesting. Uh, but uh, again, used to be one of the world's largest religions, and uh, wiped out to a great extent by the Islamic conquest. So, so what thoughts do you have about this? What, can you see any similarities between this religion oh, yeah. and yeah. maybe others? Monotheistic, uh, they are. the ethics, uh, good thoughts, good works, uh, good intentions. Future saviors coming? Yes, they all teach that. That's the interesting thing. But, um, yeah, Judaism taught that. Um, one of the... Uh, <coughs> I was, I was in Cologne, Germany, and the cathedral in Cologne is famous. And behind the altar in Cologne is a very large, elaborately carved gold box. And they claim that uh, the gold box contains the bodies of the three wise men. That supposedly, when Empress Helena, the mother of Constantine, went back to Israel, she brought back artifacts with her, and one of the artifacts she brought back was the bodies of the wise men. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, nowhere in the New Testament does it say that there were three wise men, it just said that there were wise men, and, uh, but it said there were three gifts. So the, the gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, there's traditions related to that. Uh, incense is a priestly item. Uh, Myrrh is a healing balm, and gold is a, is a kingly uh, artifact. So, uh, theoretically, or supposedly, the story is that what the wise men were doing is testing the child to see if he would be a healer, a priest, or a king. And the story is that he accepted all three. Uh, if you read the story also, the wise men came to the, the king, to, to Herod, and says, we're looking for the child who's going to be king of Israel. And Herod would not countenance any opposition from any other source. Uh, in fact, it was the, the Herod family was a dynasty, so he's certainly not going to let someone else over, mm -hmm. arise and, and kill his dynasty. So the story is that he uh, told the wise men, when you find the child, let me know and I'll come worship him too. But it was his, it was his intention to kill the child. So you have the story is that Here's a family of a carpenter and maybe a farmer, uh, probably not very wealthy. These men show up from 5,000 miles to the east and bring in gold, which possibly financed the trip, their trip into Egypt, which saved Jesus' life. So in that sense, uh, their appearance would have been a, a rescue mission. Uh, in another sense, they had recognized the fulfillment of their own prophecies and came to worship the rebirth of Zoroaster. So that's who they would have viewed Jesus mm -hmm. as. And then they just disappear from the story. And how did their bodies wind up in this? I'm <laughs> kind of skeptical. Okay. But, good, uh, good salespeople, just like people yeah. who travel now and they say, oh yes, this was an artifact <laughs> yeah. from the Greek. Each, <laughs> each like one of the salesman. Yeah. 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 Each, each one of the cathedrals <laughs> had artifacts. Mm -hmm. So um, the lowest people of yeah. Did I show you this one before? Um, I mean. Yes, I have an yeah. idea of many of the Yeah. <laughs> so this is Constantine, Emperor Constantine's yeah, meeting hall in Trier, Germany. That's the inside of it. It is now a Baptist church. So this building is 1,700 years old. And he had a gladiator stadium. This is the baths that he built. This is in Germany. Uh, supposedly his mother was from Germany. This is the cathedral, and he, he built the core of the cathedral. Of course, it's expanded a little bit. Uh, on the bottom right there, the two on the right, behind the altar is this room. And supposedly his mother, when she went on pilgrimage or to Israel, brought back the robe of Jesus. 
So they call this cathedral the Dome of the Robe. And there actually is a robe without seam in the cathedral, and they take it out occasionally to show it. So this, again, could be the robe of Jesus. This is in the treasury. This is a box that contains the sandal of the of the Apostle Andrew. I like to add in box. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, this, and these are the, supposedly the chains that bound Peter. This is in the, uh, the Trier Cathedral. And she also brought back some nails. <coughs> so the story is that Constantine incorporated the crucifixion nails into the bit of his horse. So this <laughs> nail is about a foot long. Huge head on the thing. But uh, So this could be the, one of the nails that crucified Jesus. I really don't know if the Roman soldiers would have given away souvenirs after mm -hmm. crucifying tens of thousands of people. But, and there's another 22 cathedrals in Europe that claim to have the nails. So uh, <laughs> you can find a lot of those nails on the road. Oh right? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like uh, Notre Dame in Paris claims to have the crown of thorns. You know. mm -hmm. The crown of thorns survived for 2,000 years, right. so, of course. So they, they um, epoxied it. <laughs> well, actually, with the robe, it was starting to, to, to deteriorate it. about a hundred years ago. They soaked it in a rubber solution and just totally ruined it. But, <laughs> but they still they trot it out anyway. occasionally. But, um, so have you, have you seen that one before? Or? Yeah. yeah, you showed us. Okay. No, I'll show you some no, cartoons. I, we've got <laughs> about uh, 12 minutes left. So. I think you're kind of cute. Huh. I kind of like this next yeah. one. What? <laughs> oh, oh. <it's> too cute. <laughs> I always thought it'd be kind. Of, this actually, I think, is one of the more humorous stories in the Bible. That some guy says, "Hey, I really like this Jewish religion. What have I got to do to join?" And when he's told, he says, "No, seriously. What? What have I got to do?" And then he says, oh, "Maybe the." Temple prostitutes of Isis, and maybe I'll go join them. So after 39 and a half years of wandering in the desert, Mrs. Moses <laughs> simply asked for directions. <laughs> My wife said that's what men do. Yeah. <laughs> Hillbilly Ten Commandments. Honor your mom and pa. So this is probably related to Tennessee or yeah. Kentucky. Or quit your foul mouth and no swapping your kinfolk stuff. Don't be hankering for it neither. Well, these are kind of universal. <laughs> and we got the job because who his dad is. So. Be the final. <laughs> Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> you got to be a fan of Jimmy Stewart to get oh, that. Yes. But, um, oh yeah, it's it's a good life. Uh, every Christmas. <laughs> so, what do you what what thoughts do you have about any or all of this? Or John's always got an opinion. So <laughs> you don't want it. Oh no, it's not that I mind talking. It's just that. Uh, I've said so many of these things before that uh, almost all religions that we know about are uh, of very similar mm -hmm. beliefs. And I suspect if we could get back, and we can't, to some of the religions before the religions we know, such as the people that built Stonehenge. Mm -hmm. We know they built it, we know it was religious in nature, and we know there are many religious thoughts prior to any of the ones we know about. Uh, they were probably something similar. Uh, and the horror about all of that is as we progress to the next level of, in most cases, when we progress to the next level of a religion, we decide those that preceded us are pagans and they need to get killed. It doesn't matter which church. 
Well, even Christianity so, said that the God of the Jews was a different God of the New Testament. Some did. And, um, of course, the Christians have been killing Jews in Europe for centuries. So. Yeah, I don't. One of my favorite horror stories is this area called Bosnia Herzegovina. Yeah. Uh, it was a very religious place prior to becoming Christian. And as the uh, disciples, the apostles go through, they become Christian. And after a short period of time, they decide the people that haven't joined the church need to be in with God, so they send them there. And mm -hmm. they had to kill these pagans. Yeah. And then it wasn't too long after that that the church splits into the Eastern and Western churches. And if you're not part of my church, I have to kill you in the name of God. Yeah. Because you're part of the other church. Is that what they do over there? And the 1990s. I'm well, going back the, long before that. And then the Muslims stepped And the Muslims, the Turks Yeah, they stepped in and conquered the whole thing. So. And uh, then after that, they decided, well, we've got a three-way split here. We've got to kill all of you except us. You know, yeah. My church kills everybody else's church. And then in the 1990s, it was really getting serious. Uh, it was horrible. So it's been going on for over 2,000 years, is what I'm saying. The same hills. Well, and that's kind of the crossroads of the cultures. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we've got some of these similar problems almost everywhere you go. Some of the uh, Oriental Chinese type stuff, some of those people become warlords and they have their own thoughts in religion and they got to kill the other warlords. Like they did with the, the Buddhists in Tibet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Tibet no, used to be a country. But, but it's so human. It is it just is. so human for us. Did you know the Queen Elizabeth, the one in England today, used to be the Queen of the Pakistan? first Queen Elizabeth, first you mean? The one today. Oh, the one today. What? Used to be the Queen of Pakistan? Well, we, sure. yeah. Well, she that was, a, was all she part was a, of India. She was the uh, Empress Queen of India yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So was, Pakistan and Israel were formed at the same time in history. One is a Jewish homeland, the other is Muslim. And if you watch the movie uh, Gandhi, it tells the mm -hmm. story of the forming of Pakistan and large percentages of the Hindus in Pakistan went to India and right. large percentages in in Muslims of Muslims went, went to, to Pakistan. Pakistan. And while they're passing each other, they decided to see how I many they could kill while they were doing it. Right. And um, decided to kill a few. Oh, yeah. I thought this was interesting. Oh, no, you're skipping East Pakistan. Uh, I, asked two Pakistan. Him, I asked a Muslim about that. Why are you so upset about Israel when Pakistan is also an artificial country and it's an Islamic homeland? So what's the, what's the difference? Um, so um, I think I spoke the other class last week. Uh, shortly after the beginning of Islam, when Muhammad died, there was a huge power struggle. Uh, and they call it a fitna, which basically is a civil war. But uh, the Umayyad dynasty of, of Sunni Muslims basically stepped in and, and seized the entire operation of Islam and turned it into a family dynasty. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the next 150 years, there was a progression of, of Umayyad family members who led Islam. It was supposed to be elected. That never really happened. Uh, so 150 years, the first 150 years of Islam, it was uh, led by people who were originally Muhammad's enemies. Uh, and then the Abbasids, uh, the, the Umayyads were Arab, the Abbasids who were uh, Shia and kind of invited the uh, Umayyads over for a banquet and when they <coughs> went into the room they shut the doors and killed them all. <laughs> so that was the beginning of the Abbasid dynasty. The only bastion of the Umayyad family that survived that was uh, about a hundred years or so after Muhammad, the Umayyads had conquered southern Spain. So the great cities of southern Spain, Cordoba and Granada and these kind of places, the great architecture and uh, institutions of, of learning and the colleges, these were Umayyad. But, uh, so in 732, it's called
called the Battle of Tours, the Muslims decided, hey, let's go conquer Paris. And so they marched north, and um, so there's Spain, and uh, at the bottom left is Cordoba and Granada. So they marched hundreds and hundreds of miles north on Paris, and on the right side you can see Paris, and about a hundred miles away is Tours, and that's where the French stopped the Muslims on their, uh, that's 149 miles. Uh, that's where the Muslims, and this is in the seventh century, so Christianity was really still on kind of shaky ground in Europe. So if the Muslims had succeeded in conquering Paris, Europe for the next thousand years would have been Muslim. Most people don't know that story. But, um, so I guess uh, I'm, I'm a history nut. I love archaeology. I love uh, comparative religion. Um, I'm just kind of wired to try to figure out how things work. And um, my son actually went to Spain a year ago, and he said he was on the east coast of Spain. And I thought, Spain's got an east coast. And <laughs> yeah. So you look at Spain yeah, and you realize it's, it's got Gibraltar. <laughs> coast all the way around. So, uh, yeah. you know the thing in, in Spain where they, uh, they dump a semi-load of tomatoes in the middle yeah, of the, sure. the city and they have a huge tomato fight? Mm -hmm. My son decided he had to go <laughs> partake of that. Well, participate. better than the running of the bowls. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he would have done that too, yeah. I think. But, um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, I guess we're out of time, so. Interesting. Thank you for being Thank a you. history nut and a yeah, religion. Yeah, I really <laughs> enjoy that. Passing that knowledge on to Yes, it's, it's. And I think John is entirely correct. Uh, the religions are more alike than they are different. And if we can just learn to be a little bit more tolerant of each other and respect each other's differences, then we don't have to all be alike, but we can still work together and cooperate and. And I think that's kind of the lesson that the world is learning right now, that um, the days of conquest are pretty much over. Because so. <laughs> it's not getting us anywhere. Well, <laughs> one of the things that entails the more people yeah. 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 One of the things <laughs> that occurs is we don't have any places left to go. When he used to get very upset with the, uh, Roger Williams, when he got very upset with the uh, people in, the, in and around the Boston area, he went down and called the uh, set up Providence Plantation. They could get away from it all. Yeah. And uh, by now, Australia is, we already know where Australia is. We know where most of the islands are. But you got no place to go. You know, if you don't get along, you, exactly. well, you can't just go across <laughs> the ocean. Not only do we know where it is, but Google can show you a picture of it. Mm -hmm. so. Right or wrong, I they know. can show you a picture. And Google now is actually is mapping the sea floor. Yeah, it's got Machines going along the bottom, wow. taking video of the sea floor. So That's I don't know. Maybe the next Disneyland will be somewhere under. under the sea ocean, <laughs> maybe. Well, that's a good place for it. Why don't you go join them? Right? <laughs> that's what we can do with all the people we don't like. Tell them to go to that. <laughs> well, if the polar <laughs> down to the bottom of the Marianas <laughs> Trench. Yeah, if, the, right. if the polar ice caps keep melting, we may be able to get in the water. So we now know we have the cars. The ones that you can transfer your consciousness into. Oh. <laughs> you do. I don't know. It sounds too scary, too. Oh, good luck, Frank. I don't know what to tell you. No, I, I, I have to be a 